Hi everyone, my name is Rohan and I welcome back to my channel. In this video, let us learn about some of the common features between Amazon Redshift and Snowflake. We'll also look at some of the differences between these two systems so that we understand each of the you know, systems better. So let's get started. So let us start with understanding uh, Redshift first. So when it comes to provisioning a Redshift cluster, so there are two choices. One is having a dedicated uh, Redshift cluster and having your uh, Redshift processing done on a serverless machine. So dedicated means it is provisioned for 24 bar 7 and you can run your any SQL queries throughout your day. So when it comes to serverless, uh, so this is mostly on a need basis, on demand basis. Right, so let's say you are running a, your SQL query and it uh, runs for like 10 minutes. So you'll be charged only for that 10 minutes. So the compute will be based on that 10 minutes, right? So compute will be uh, charged based on 10 minutes uh, of computing. And now when, when it comes to uh, the types of cluster, so there are uh, three different types of clusters. The first one is the dense storage, right? So in this uh, type of uh, cluster, you will have more storage and limited processing power. So processing power means it's a compute. So you have very less compute power, but your storage will be really high. So these are suitable for some uh, non-prod, non-production applications or any uh, type of you know research and development. So these type of uh, instance can be uh, choosed and uh, this is comparatively uh, cheaper. So dense compute is um, is a type of cluster wherein you will have you your compute as you know higher uh, limit. So the dense compute will have more uh, processing power, which means you know your uh, data processing will be much faster when when it compares to uh, the DS2 type of uh, cluster. So DC2 are mostly um, you know used by the business applications which which are critical in nature and all the production based. Um, you know applications or query performing or any ad hoc analysis or anything and the third instance uh, I mean the cluster type is RA3 uh, this is um, the latest offering from uh, AWS standpoint uh, which in which the storage and compute is decoupled whereas in DS2 and DC2 type of uh, clusters you have your storage and your compute both are coupled together in the same instance but in RA3 it's a uh, it's also called as managed storage uh, offering from AWS wherein your storage and compute is decoupled what it means is um, you can uh, let's say your data is growing um, you know exponentially but you may not be needing a higher compute Right, so that's when you can go with RA3. Um, you don't have to increase your compute when you want to increase your storage. But whereas in the other first two type of uh, instance, if you want more storage, then you will have to add more uh, you know, nodes to it. And when you add more nodes, by default, you have your compute also increased and your storage is also increased. But in RA3, it is uh, decoupled. Next, moving on, uh, let us understand the snowflake now. So Snowflake uh, is very highly scalable uh, when it comes to you know storage and processing. So like we discussed about uh, this RA3, right? Uh, in case of uh, Redshift. So this is Snowflake is pretty much like an RA3 uh, with a combination of serverless uh, offering. So wherein your uh, storage and processing is decoupled and it can be scaled at any time. Right, so that's the primary understanding, uh, primary you know uh, feature. And when it comes to performing uh, performance, um, you don't user or developer, uh, you know they don't have to worry on performance because AWS Snowflake engine is um, you know designed such a way that you don't have to worry about your uh, your indexes, tuning, or you know partitioning. So Snowflake will automatically take care of all such you know performance related. Uh, optimizations and uh, even the pricing for snowflake uh, is again decoupled uh, like compute and storage uh, so there will be a separate pricing for your compute and a separate pricing for storage so storage is most likely you know very cheaper uh, as you all know but the compute is when um, you know charged but at the 
cost of you know serverless redshift uh, you know pricing model so let's say your uh, sql is running for you know 5 minutes so your compute will be uh, charged for this 5 minutes and you if you have like 1 terabyte of uh, storage so this 1 terabyte storage will, cost will be based on this sto file storage you know pricing model which is you know very cheap right so that's the um, you know uh, understanding of this you know snowflake when it comes to pay per use and whenever you want to uh, run your query you will have to provisioning uh, you will have to provision a new um, you know virtual warehouse so that's when you will be able to uh, do your compute whereas in redshift uh, it is like um, you just provision that serverless uh, and uh, that will be available um, for uh, for us to process whereas in uh, snowflake uh, we will have to provision a virtual warehouse before you uh, start computing or before you run your query for any data processing standpoint right and uh, now let's look at some of the common features between uh, redshift and snowflake and then we'll go to the differences so both amazon redshift and snowflake are uh, designed for cloud based data browsing purposes so that's the very primary you know common uh, feature between these two systems so both redshift and snowflake are both uh, columnar storage uh, databases and uh, they're all uh, both are available on the cloud whereas you have a little bit of flexibility when it comes to snowflake you can choose either aws or azure or you know gcp and the next common difference is both are um, you know clustered architecture wherein you will have your you know compute node and uh, you can increase your worker nodes right so this can be scaled in both um, you know uh, type of uh, cloud data warehouse you can scale for example today you have three nodes and tomorrow you need you know more um, you know clustered you know, nodes then you can have any number of Know, nodes so that's the clustered architecture and next feature is the scale in and scale out so whenever there is an increased demand for uh, data processing um, it can uh, automatically scale out and when there are no loads on the server then it can automatically scale in so the scale in scale out is available on both of the uh, data browsing systems whereas there are certain differences um, with the speed of you know scaling in and scale out we will we'll talk about that in a, in the differences uh, section but uh, for now let's understand that scaling and scale out is available on both data browsing system so now let's understand some of the difference between redshift and snowflake cloud data warehouse so as you all know aws uh, has this offering uh, called amazon redshift but whereas in uh, Snowflake, uh, it's a platform independent. So it can be the cloud vendor can be AWS or it can be Azure or it can be even GCP, right? So that's on a very high level. The first uh, important uh, aspect between uh, these two is scalability. So both scale in and scale out is much faster when it comes to Snowflake and uh, even though this feature is existing in redshift also the scalability or scale in scale out uh, usually you know takes between uh, 10 to 30 seconds uh, when there is an increased demand or uh, less in the demand whereas in uh, snowflake it is uh, pretty much instance and uh, snowflake claims that you know the scale in scale out feature is less than just few seconds and uh, when it comes to performance i think um, you know everything is automatically you know managed within snowflake so snowflake engine will take care of um, making sure that uh, the data which is frequently accessed is you know easily uh, accessed in the you know data processing standpoint so we don't have to work on any um, indexing tuning or you know partitioning especially in the snowflake so this will be a very developer friendly um, you know uh, system but whereas in uh, redshift we will have to manually analyze the table you know analyze you know compute and computer statistics and uh, vacuum so these uh, are all the manual operations within a uh, redshift see the advantage of uh, doing these manual is you can set your time window wherein you want to you know, analyze what time you want to you know do the compute 
or what time you you know schedule the vacuum so let's say you want to do uh, these administrative tasks over the night or maybe on the weekends only or you know monthly wise or you can you have that flexibility to choose when to run your uh, administrative um, you know operations so that's the flexibility uh, if you take it positively whereas uh, since these are uh, actively um, you know done on snowflake it is somewhere you know it's consuming that compute power to make sure uh, the queries are um, you know highly performant and data processing is done on uh, you know time so that's the trade between uh, these two system and moving on uh, the paper use uh, both are um, having the common storage um, but but when it comes to like type of uh, ds uh, dense storage or you know dense compute type of uh, redshift you know clusters uh, you have your uh, storage and compute tightly coupled so if i were to do this so this is redshift and this is snowflake so if you take dense storage or dense compute uh, your compute and storage is pretty stagnant okay so if you want to increase your compute you have to increase your storage also or if you just want more storage um, by default you have to increase your compute because as soon as you add more nodes these two will automatically get added right so this is the major difference whereas in snowflake these two are decoupled the storage and the compute is decoupled you can scale your storage or you can scale your compute as needed but so this this uh, feature is actually included in the ra3 type of instance in redshift so if you have ra3 and if you want to scale just the storage or just the compute that is possible right so ra3 and snowflake is somewhere comparable so that's the second uh, you know um, important thing and third thing is you know redshift uh, now uh, i think 2020 onwards they have introduced you know serverless uh, 2021 in fact so there is a serverless uh, option in redshift which is very much comparable with uh, the snowflake you know type of uh, processing whereas uh, snowflake in case of any um, you know processing we will have to provision a new uh, virtual warehouse and uh, these virtual warehouse will be charged only for the duration of the query that you are running so let's say you have a sql query running for five minutes right so you'll be charged only for that five minute similarly uh, even in redshift serverless if you run your query for five minutes it will be charged only for five minutes the difference is only when it comes to the older type of instances dense storage and dense compute right so that's where uh, even though you are running only 10 minutes of your query it will still be charged uh, based on uh, you know the cluster uh, lifetime if you have it for like 24 bar 7 and you still have uh, your query time as you know 10 minutes then this is not of you know best use case so if you have a limited uh, processing uh, on the redshift you may have to choose a uh, serverless type of provisioning so that you can at least compare with uh, snowflake type of you know processing so that's the difference between uh, these two so a combination of ra3 and serverless feature is uh, very closely uh, comparable with snowflake so these are some of the differences between uh, you know redshift and snowflake i hope uh, this video was uh, helpful uh, in understanding the differences and uh, i'll be adding more videos in the future so stay tuned and uh, happy learning thank you